So is online shopping safe for privacy? Unfortunately, this is one of those things I've done that predate even the use of mobile phones. I've been shopping online since the beginning of the internet. We'll at least analyze what privacy issues may exist and what things we can do to mitigate privacy risks. I'll discuss how we identify ourselves to the e-commerce site, as well as how we identify our payments and if there's anything to fear. Up next. I post my videos in advance of YouTube on Library, which is also now Odyssey. I have a link in the description so you can follow me there. Doing well on Library and I'm now ranked at 40 on the creators list. Thank you, Library. Online shopping is one of those areas that I can honestly say I've failed in when it comes to being privacy conscious. For example, I've been shopping at Amazon since Amazon started. I do still use Amazon extensively, but where I can, I limit the amount of information they can get about me. Amazon is definitely a good example to talk about. It's not just a shopping site. I have a lot of cloud servers, for example, that are on Amazon AWS. I also understand that Amazon itself is likely the largest cloud provider for the intelligence community. On top of that, Amazon shares data to law enforcement with ring cameras. And of course, there is the extensive voice recording collection on Amazon Echo. And I just checked my credit card purchases and clearly a big chunk of my expenditures are done directly on Amazon, especially now that we are locked indoors. So it is difficult to isolate this data to say the least. Some of you may have done a better job than I have of separating your online shopping data, but I doubt it. The question now is, have I been zucked by all this? What data has been collected about me? And do we care? As you already know, from the time you became an adult, your financial transactions begin to be tracked the moment you get your first credit card. Then you start to establish credit. And credit itself is based on a history of your purchases as well as a record of your payments. The cat is out of the bag on this one. Your credit report with credit reporting agencies like Equifax in the US already contain extremely specific data, such as your name, address, birth date, social security number, phone numbers, every place you've lived in, in addition to your transaction. It's the price we have to pay to get this benefit called credit, which for a young person is supposedly important. There really isn't a privacy solution to credit unless we go off grid and pay only in cash. Nowadays, this is even more impossible. There are other problems. Given that there is so much detail on our credit reports, we are 100% identified and we have the additional problem that Equifax itself has been hacked and someone is now in possession of a database of names, social security numbers, date of birth, addresses, and we cannot do anything about it. Unfortunately, we have no ability to change our name, our social security number, or our address history. So once it has leaked out, we have to always assume that some entity is in possession of this database. I'm certain that by now there are many copies of this database. And this is for the USA. In the news, it always seems like the USA bears the brunt of privacy invasions. As far as I know, the Equifax breach did not necessarily retrieve transactions, only identifiers, which is bad enough. If I have someone's name and city, I can likely find the rest of the information in this stolen Equifax data. So my assumption in day-to-day -day privacy management is that there is already a full record of me with my real name and my real life purchases. I consider this part of my real identity activities, just like buying real estate or getting a driver's license. And I just need to make sure that I have other identities that I try to disconnect from the financial records already available in various databases. Back to the online shopping scenario, and let me just focus first on Amazon.com, since it's the biggest. Is our shopping data safe with Amazon? Since we can't be certain about anything, let's analyze first what Amazon would know about me. 
In general, buying normal products probably don't do much to identify you. However, it is possible to be profiled by things like gun and ammo purchases or even medications purchases. These fortunately are not normally purchased from an Amazon.com site and are already isolated purchases to begin with. They know my shipping address. By the way, I don't exactly use my real name on Amazon. I use a corporate name at all times. I use a corporate credit card. But they may know my name just from past shipping to this same address. I also do not use my real name on eBay. So just with these two major sites, they do allow you to use an alias. So make use of that. There's something that I've always been particularly irritated with Amazon in the past. If you buy something from Amazon, they will happily send you an email confirming your purchase with all the details, all. As I've said time and time again, emails can be read by third parties. And certain email providers like Gmail deliberately read your emails, scanning for such things as shopping and other event triggers like graduations, birthdays, baby showers, weddings, and so on. Let's say you bought some bras and panties. It would say, thank you for your purchase of bras and panties and list out the different colors and sizes with your shipping name and address on there, on the email. The problem is that if your Amazon account email is Gmail, then Gmail will then see what you purchased together with the rest of your identity in the email. Fortunately, I'm happy to report that Amazon no longer puts a detail of your purchases on the email itself or the shipping info. So this is no longer as big of an issue. However, I would still worry about Google knowing how frequently I purchase. eBay is still using the same method that Amazon used in the past. They will email you about your purchase details with your name and shipping address. Again, very disturbing. And you may want to use the same precautions do not put your real name on the shipping address and do not use a Gmail account for it. So another shopping safety tip, use a private email address for shopping. Do not use a Gmail one or any of the free emails that may be reading your email. In my case, I use my own domain email address. Since email is a clear source of a data leak, my objective is to isolate the data so it doesn't cross onto other platforms if I can do it. You may want to use several email addresses for shopping, maybe one for each major platform. You may want to do this to allow you to monitor which shopping site is selling your data to others. A good way to accomplish this is that some email providers like Yahoo, for example, allows you to create alternate email addresses that all forward to a single one. You can still read your email at one delivery address, but the email stored at each e-commerce site can be different. I personally use different email addresses as I've described here. Based on this metric, I've found that Amazon hoards your data to themselves. I have not found increased spam coming from the identity I use with Amazon. I use a specific email account and name on it, and I've never seen any spam associated with it. This gets me a clue that they're not selling the data and it is confirmed by their terms of service agreement. Now, some of you may use other services like me that are part of Amazon, such as Amazon AWS or a Ring camera or an Amazon Echo. The only other services that I actually use is Amazon AWS, and I use a completely different identity with that. Again, I'm not getting any spam or any other indication that that identity is being shared. So I'm happy that they respect my privacy. Ring cameras and Amazon Echoes are definitely privacy invasions. They don't hide what they do with those. I was reading the disclosures on Amazon Echo and they're pretty frank with what they're doing, meaning recording your voice. Ring camera videos are shared with law enforcement. That's also been quite clear. I would definitely worry about these two product lines, at least if you want to keep your shopping closed up. Since Echo is connected to shopping, I wouldn't want that to get voice recordings mixed in with my shopping data. I've thought hard about what additional things Amazon knows about me, and I figured that they know about my shopping habits and even what books I read. But Amazon is not a social media site. I'm not there expressing ideas or political opinions. I suppose some small amount of my book reading may be used to profile me. Fortunately, generally that is not a standout in my case. My book choices 
tend to lean to fiction. Be aware that Amazon is a very powerful company. They could send their shopping data to the intelligence agencies and use that for some sort of monitoring. These intelligence agencies are their clients. However, I don't consider myself a relevant target, so this is not part of my threat model. In general, the Amazon data would be more of a financial profile. One other thing to consider is that some social media sites connect to e-commerce sites. They do this with Facebook shares, for example. Make sure to never link your e-commerce account to Google or Facebook or your data will begin to be shared. Do not link emails used in shopping with social media. Make sure they are different. Do not use the same phone number that you used in social media. If anything, I would use my normal phone number with shopping since it is tied to my credit cards anyway. The issue here is that now you have opinions and ideas on social media. Mixing that with financial information would make the social media data more valuable. So deny the social media sites that information. Now let's talk about how payments are done. I've done several types of approaches and each has some pluses and minuses. I can't tell you what would be best for you. This has been my general principle for all small e-commerce sites outside of Amazon. Where I can, I always stick to PayPal. The reason I do this is for security. Credit card fraud is obviously a big fear and it is time consuming to resolve. When I go to a small e-commerce site to buy something, just by using my credit card, I'm revealing too much information about myself to that site, as well as passing a credit card number. Smaller sites will not usually have good security with credit card info, so the chances of it being stolen are very high. So to avoid that, I use PayPal. In my case, my PayPal is a business account, so its identity is also corporate. If you can do it, you can do all of your payments on a corporate name, even if it's just passed through, if you have that ability. Obviously, this is a lot of work and doesn't necessarily completely hide your identity. However, it is another layer out there that prevents profiling. The credit card that I use with Amazon is also corporate, so that is how I do the separation there. I actually use PayPal for eBay as well, so I don't have to give out any additional information. The fear, of course, is that PayPal will then have knowledge of your transactions. On the other hand, financial transactions are already known anyway, so the bigger risk is credit card fraud in this case. The more dangerous platform, in my opinion, is Venmo. Venmo is a PayPal company now, but it links social media, a financial history, and a contact list. I think Venmo is a payment method to be avoided at all costs. This will generate metadata. There's another option I've researched that can be used for shopping, and it's a credit card solution from privacy.com. What privacy.com does is allow you to issue unique credit card numbers for specific purposes, like a specific one to use only for Amazon. In theory, this is supposed to prevent the stealing of credit card numbers since they can be unique to each e-commerce site. However, Privacy.com is not like a PayPal where you add your own credit cards. Privacy.com is linked directly to your bank account, so it is really more of a debit card, a direct debit card. For that reason, you don't get the benefit of delayed payment or even the use of credit. Since you are still completely identified by your bank account, there's no hiding of your data from privacy.com itself. I haven't tried it yet, so I don't know if you can use a different name on each of your manually issued credit card numbers. I'm guessing that you can use a different name, so that's a potentially good benefit. Because it's really a debit card solution, it's kind of a specialized thing and may not work for the bulk of online shoppers. Another similar solution to this is a crypto-based credit card like BitPay. This is a USA-based credit card only, but you basically fill up your credit card with Bitcoin and then it will be converted to US dollars. Because there's no credit involved, this does not show up in credit reporting agencies. Though this is of course covered by KYC laws, know your customer. You may use this with a different name on a card though. So anytime you can do that is good. 
This is obviously more complicated than privacy.com since you have to buy the BTC and then you have to transfer it. However, you won't really be subject to BTC price fluctuations since you're actually holding the money in US dollars on the BitPay card. There may be better and more anonymous solutions outside of the USA, but it's very strict here. So they want to make sure no one converts crypto back to dollars without the government knowing. Sometimes a combination of these payment methods could be useful. It's not always a one size fits all. It may depend on what you're buying and if it needs some extra privacy. Let's talk about shipping address solutions now. Obviously, one of the ways to separate your identity from the e-commerce site is by using a PO box service of some sort or mailbox service. Let me tell you what it does and then what it does not do. Although you can receive mail using a different identity or a corporate identity, a PO box, even from a private company, is subject to a know your customer or KYC laws. So they verify your identity. I guess they don't want bomb parts and drugs and such to be shipped to unknown entities. I want to make sure this is clear that they will verify your identity absolutely before you can open a box. However, even with that, it offers some data separation because the e-commerce site can ship to someone with a different name and address on their records and the PO box company doesn't know what's in the boxes being shipped. An obvious method of obfuscating a mailbox is, of course, to have it be registered by someone else. Lots of work, obviously, since you have to coordinate making payments to the mailbox company. Again, this won't work for criminal purposes, so all I'm talking about here is its use for privacy. Unless you're the subject of law enforcement surveillance, this is a reasonably good way to achieve some privacy and it's a must for those doing any kind of business involved in shipping. This is not foolproof. For example, if you're trying to fully hide your delivery address identity because you're famous or something, a detective could easily determine who the delivery address really belongs to. It takes a few steps, but it is not something you could keep secret. For a more secret way of package delivery, you will have to use something called a mail forwarding service. Obviously, this is more inconvenient since it delays shipping and, and adds significant cost due to forwarding. You can find many companies that offer this. It's actually a common thing for boaters, for example, to use those who are cruising the world. They can receive their packages in a central location and then have it shipped to wherever they are at the moment. I've read of a famous person who went off grid and tested his ability to hide using this forwarding service. One of the additional precautions he took was to make sure the forwarding service was in a different state. By the way, that guy did it well and he hired a detective and the detective had difficulty finding him using the forwarding method. Also, the cost of shipping can be reduced by consolidating many separate shipments into one. Combining a mail forwarding service with a P.O. box is, of course, another obfuscation technique. Let's summarize what my assessment of the online shopping problem is. I think that in general, for most people, we already have a large record of transactions associated with online purchases. These are in the possession of e-commerce sites, credit card companies, credit reporting agencies, the ad tracking companies that track your presence online, and the email companies like Gmail that harvest the data on the email. So we need to ask ourselves, what is the further threat for the future since it is too late to change the past? In a way, this is a battle that's already been lost. You could obviously go off the grid, go to cash only, arrange for a mail forwarding service and obfuscate delivery addresses. This is pretty hardcore and is not something I do unless you're subject to an active threat or seriously hiding from the paparazzi. For most of us, I think the goal is to isolate the data to each e-commerce site to make sure that whatever you do at each stays only on that site. That is the only realistic goal, I think. You can do this by changing your name on those sites. You can use a different name on Amazon and eBay, for example. You can use obfuscated names for payment, such as with privacy.com, a corporate PayPal or corporate credit card, or you can go to the trouble of paying 
with Amazon gift cards you buy in cash or refillable debit cards. My main fear is mass surveillance and centralization of this kind of data. It is unfortunately already centralized at the credit card reporting agencies, but at least that's subject to some financial disclosure laws. It's not much though. I hear, for example, that Facebook buys this credit card data to use it to go guide its advertising on their platform. We need to prevent the data from e-commerce sites from being seen by others like Facebook and Google through the use of browser fingerprinting. For example, I use a browser isolation technique where I make sure Google is on Brave and then I do my shopping on Firefox. This way, there's no way for my shopping data to leak to Google and I don't use Facebook. I make sure that I set up unique email addresses for shopping that's different for other social media use or business use. This warns me ahead of time if my data is being sold. It also prevents my email from being read by a third party that may be extracting my shopping information. I do not use Gmail or any other free email for my shopping email. I use my own domain and for the rest of you, I would recommend using paid email accounts which are more private. I consolidate payments in as few payment accounts as possible. I use PayPal because the alternative is to put my credit card information in many more e-commerce sites and the likelihood of that resulting in fraud is extremely high. You can consider other options like crypto-based credit cards like BitPay or Privacy.com. In general, my shopping information has very limited scope. It can profile me financially but much more data can be derived from what I put in social media in my behavior than from shopping. So I don't put shopping at the top of my privacy concerns and neither should you. In general, I don't consider Amazon and eBay to be social media sites and thus aren't my main focus. So shopping season is upon us soon and with just a few basic changes, you can at least reduce the risks. Otherwise, I'd say this is not something we'd normally have to worry about too much. At least there's no facial recognition with online shopping. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. One thing that I promise is that you will always learn a lot from everything I present here. Thank you for supporting me on Patreon and buying my products. See you next time.